Yeah, let's go. All right, now let's walk on the sidewalk. Okay, okay. I know we think the reason for the season, <laughs> we think the reason for the season is Santa and the Grinch. But to be honest with you, the reason for the season is Jesus, Jesus Christ. We don't call it Christmas just to say Christmas. It's more of Christ, more of Jesus, more of Christ. It's more of Yeshua, more of Jesus. Not more of Santa, more of Christ. He's the reason. He came into this world. Beautiful baby in a manger. But that baby that was born became a man. And his man, his name is Christ Jesus. He's the one that actually created everything you see and everything you don't see. It's Jesus, it's Christ. Christ Jesus is the reason for the season. He's the reason why we have this beautiful gift called salvation. Huh? He's the reason for the season. He's the reason. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We have an opportunity. We have an opportunity to turn our lives to Christ. It's a beautiful time to come together as a family. But it's not about Santa Claus. It's not about the Grinch. Jesus is the true reason for the season. He's the reason for everything. The breath in your lungs. The creation you see itself attests that there's a creator. You don't see a building and don't think there's no builder. You don't see a painting and don't think a painter. So you have a creator. His name is Christ Jesus. And he set something into place. He set something into motion that you could be born again of water and spirit, that you could turn your life to Christ. It's not about religion. It's about a relationship, Hallelujah. relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, that you have an opportunity to turn your heart to him, not just join a church. We say be the church, Hallelujah. be the body of Christ. God is restoring a family. We come together and we have community and that's beautiful, but you're not here by accident. God created you inside of your mother's womb for purpose. You're not an accident. So God has set something into motion. He calls all men to be born again of water and spirit. That means to put your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. He's the true reason for the season. The beautiful, yes, more of Christ, more of Christ. That's what it means. More of Christ in Christmas. More of Christ in everything that we do. You have a creator. And he set something into motion. Santa Claus and the Grinch is not the creator. <laughs> There's a little workshop getting things together. That's what we call a lie from the pit of hell. Let's turn around. So the kingdom of God is at hand. God is saying, my spiritual family, I'm restoring. He's right here. Yeah. It's pretty loud. I don't know. Worry about it. Jesus is the reason for the season. And now Santa Claus or Grinch. <laughs> it says Christ Mass, not Santa Mass, not Grinch Mass, <laughs> like any other Mass. It's truly more of Christ, more of the Lord Jesus Christ. He wants the people of God to know that it's about relationship with Him, not about religion. Christ didn't say, I come to create religion. He was actually against the religious. He said, I come to bring a kingdom. And in this kingdom, you know, on this earth, we vote. 
Now we hire our people, we, we, we vote for our presidents. But here's the thing, when, when Christ sets things, things into motion, it's not a democracy, it's a theocracy. You can't elect Christ Jesus, he's king. And when he returns, the Bible calls him the king of kings, the Lord of lords. He rules all. Thank you, Jesus. He rules all. So when you're going to get gifts under the Christmas tree, <laughs> you need to understand that the true gift is the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. That's why we celebrate him. We celebrate Christ because he's the true gift. <laughs> he's the gift that continually keeps on giving. But here's the thing, if you reject his gift of salvation, the Bible says if you reject Christ, then he'll have to reject you before the Father. So I'm speaking the truth in love. Turn your hearts to the Lord Jesus Christ. Repent, meaning have a change of mind. Not just believe that he existed, actually believe everything he said. Christ Jesus is the way. He's the truth. He's the life. He's not a way, he is the way. Amen. So that is the most offensive statement, of course. Because people will say, well, I want to do my way, I want to do what I want to do. And Christ is saying, you can do that, but in order to experience my love, you have to make a choice. You have to surrender your will to me. And I'm going to tell you right now, Christ's way is the best way. Christ's way is the only way. Who not better to put your trust in? Your creator. Don't you think he knows better? So Christ really is the reason for the season. Not all the other stuff that we're a part of. I find it funny that Santa is pretty closely related in Satan <laughs> with the etymology. You switch a few letters around and he got the same guy. <laughs> and he has to be, he, he knows what you're, what you're thinking. <laughs> and he's dressed in all red. Amen. <laughs> so we know that there's a spiritual thing at work, blinding the minds, blinding the understanding. But the true reason for Christmas is Christ Jesus. That's the real reason. Amen. Don't let anyone else fool you. We're here for one reason. That's to serve the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen, amen. That's the real reason. To repent, to turn from our ways and turn to God, put our faith and trust in Him. He was born in a manger, just like our babies. He was born in a manger. And that beautiful day, this gift shifted all time and space. Everything changed. Our calendars changed. Our time changed. Even when we look at the calendars, it's all because of Christ Jesus. And so God set something in motion. But that baby that was born by Mary was actually God in the flesh. So he's not just a man. He's actually God in the flesh. And that baby eventually became a man. And that man, named Jesus, came forward. And he never sinned. The one thing that we all struggle with is we all sin. We all make mistakes. We all messed up. But Christ came, died, to save you from your sins, not for you to stay in them though. To show you that there is a way out. There is a way to be rescued. Sin is breaking God's law. And when we break His law, there is a punishment. And the punishment was death. It's like literally being in court and being told that you have the death penalty. But now someone comes in and takes the death penalty for you. That's what Christ Jesus did. He took the death penalty for you. He gives you now the ability to choose Him. But He doesn't want you to walk out of that courtroom and do the same things you were doing before. He wants you to change. Put your trust in Him. 
and grow. I rebuke every spirit in the name of Jesus. No matter what, even in the years ago, God set something into motion. We don't have to entertain any distractions. For Christ Jesus is ruler. He is the only reason why we're here. I rebuke and renounce that spirit in the name of Jesus. Right now. Let's exercise self-control. So the beautiful thing that Christ Jesus set into motion. No, 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 that's fine. The beautiful thing that Christ Jesus set into motion. Down is, is okay. loud. Yeah, you put it the opposite way. <laughs> The beautiful thing about Christ is that He never, ever sinned. So He conquered the thing that we struggle with. We lie, we cheat, we steal. We curse each other out. We say bad things about each other. We curse each other. We tear each other down. And Christ Jesus has set something into motion. And what Christ has set into motion is this. He died for your sins, but not for you to stay in them. The beautiful thing about this opportunity called Christmas is to remind you that it really is about Christ Jesus, more of Christ. Not about the Grinch, not about Santa. It's about Christ Jesus. Amen. Tell your children, tell them the truth. That someone died 2,000 years ago. And not only did he die, he raised from the grave. Hallelujah, Lord. And he ascended. Thank you, Jesus. And he told everyone that they're without excuse. That everybody has an opportunity to make a choice. To put their faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. To actually walk in repentance. To actually have a change of mind, a change of heart. For he is the Son of God. And he overcame sin and death because when we break the law, that causes us to be in incorrect standing with our Creator. And when we broke his law, the consequence, he says, for the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God, the free gift of God, is eternal life. That means God gives you in payment for you living for yourself. That's really what sin is. It's just basically saying, I want to do it my way instead of God's way. That's what it boils down to. And so Christ is telling us something today. Do it my way. Your way will never work. <laughs> Your way will only get you so far. So Christ has set something into motion. He tells us to be born again. That means not to be born from below, but born from above. Born spiritually. So this beautiful, I mean, think about it. Jesus was born from above, amen? Hallelujah. A star was born, literally. That's where they were walking and watching and looking at everything. And he came out of that manger and grew up as a grown man. And he conquered sin and death. Because the rule was that if anyone sins, you must die. But Christ never sinned. He was perfect. But he gave his life willingly for us. He wasn't forced. He said, I give up my life willingly because he knew this is the one thing that allows us to be saved. So no, it's not about Santa Claus and the Grinch. It's actually about Christ Jesus, the truth, the way, the life. So tell your family, give yourself an opportunity to really make that decision to turn to the Lord Jesus Christ to have relationship, not religion. Now we have people here, and if some of you guys need prayer for anything, pray in your body, pray for healing, pray for protection, we have people here that can pray for you. We tell you guys the truth, amen. Blessed are the children. You guys love Jesus? You guys love Jesus? Amen. You guys need prayer for anything? With your family or anything like that? In physical, anybody in physical pain? Here. Have one of the sisters pray. Come on, guys, sisters, let's go. 
So God is so good. He's pulling us out and giving us an opportunity to love on each other. I know a lot of the things we say, it may not sound like, it may not sound like fun to the ears. Jesus is truly the reason for the season. But he's not just the reason for the season. He actually created everything you see and everything you don't see. And it's really unfortunate that we, we don't understand that. We don't understand that Christ has set something into motion for all of us. He wants us to be born again from above. He came from above and went down to us to meet us where we were at. Because he knew that we needed the help. God's will was that mankind expand his kingdom, expand the spiritual family of God, not create a bunch of religion. And that's fine. We have a little churches here and a little buildings here. But to be honest with you, those buildings are going to fade away. The Bible says that heaven and earth will pass away, but his word will last forever. Hallelujah. And he wants us to operate in eternity with him to become a part of the family of God, the spiritual family. When we made that mistake in the garden, a curse came before all of us. We all lied, we all stolen, we all cheated, we all sinned, and we broke God's laws. We decided to do it our way instead of God's way. And now, that is the way that we do things. But now Christ is setting something us for us to operate as a tree of life where we can love each other. We can give each other the truth. Bless you guys in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. The parable of the sower says that we sow seed when we share the word of God. Christ Jesus is truly the reason why we're living. He's the real purpose of life, not satisfying yourself, not accomplishing goals, and that's fine. There's nothing wrong with having opportunities or taking advantage of opportunities. But the truth is, is you're not here by accident. You're not just a bunch of stardust. That sounds like a good way just to avoid having a creator. Most people don't want to believe in God because they don't want to believe that they have to answer to a higher power. But that higher power is the Lord Jesus Christ. The name of Jesus Christ. That's by, that's the only name that people can be saved. Amen. And he overcame death. And in fact, in the spiritual world, he snatched out the power of death from the grip of Satan, the devil. And yes, there is a real devil. And he's not just the guy coming down the Christmas tree. Amen. <laughs> This devil does not wear red. This devil looks like an angel of light. He's going to look like the things that you like to do, the sin that you like to do. He's going to say, yes, keep, keep watching pornography. Keep lying. Keep stealing. Keep being selfish. He's going to ask us to keep doing this, keep doing that. Keep staying in our sins. But Christ is telling us that we need to be born again from above, not below, from above. Jesus truly is the reason for the season. He's the gift that gives us eternal life. It says, him that receive him shall have eternal life. You're not going to eternal life. You inherit eternal life when you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. And not just believe like you have an idea of him you actually are committed for the rest of your life. You're saying, God, I am committed to a relationship with you. Jesus, I want a relationship with you. I don't want just understanding. I don't want just an idea of you. I don't want to just look up the term Christianity. What's so interesting is that Christ Jesus never came to create Christians. <laughs> he never came to create Christianity, as we say it. He didn't come to bring religion. But what he sent into motion was a spiritual family, his kingdom. His kingdom is greater than anything else. And so he says, I'm going to start from the inside out. People are going to believe in me. I'm going to pour out my spirit 
and my Holy Spirit is going to come inside of them. Absolutely. And then I can actually grow and expand throughout people. Because that was his intended purpose, was for people to be in relationship with him, not relationship with yourself. If you're hearing these words today, it's not by accident. It's because the Lord Jesus Christ is calling you. He's trying to tell you to wake up. Understand, I'm coming soon. I'm coming soon. The Bible says that a day is like a thousand years, or a thousand years is like a day to the Lord. So we know that we are in the last days. And it's already been 2,000 years. And Christ Jesus has suffered. He's no longer the baby in the manger, y'all. He's no longer the little nativity scene we've seen every year around Christmas. But he became a man. He sacrificed his life for us so that we can have salvation. But for those that actually choose to put their faith, that's trust and obedience in him. You can believe that Christ Jesus actually lived. And guess what? The demons believe. The devils believe. But they don't have faith in Christ Jesus. They don't trust in the Savior. They know where they're going. And you'd be surprised. The demons that come through different type of religions, different types of things that we entertain, different types of witchcraft and spells and new age and all these other things that we think that are going to protect us. We're going to think that the creation itself is going to protect you. It's not going to protect you. The Bible says that we don't worship the creation. We worship the creator. Amen. So you don't put your faith in crystals. You don't put your faith in evil eyes. You don't put your faith in these things. Yeah, I said it. Don't put your faith in tarot card readings. Don't put your faith in these things. Put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. He's greater than all these things. These are just demons masking themselves as other things. And yes, you live in a spirit world. You're not just your body. Your body, soul, and spirit. And God desires His Holy Spirit to live inside of you. But He's calling us now to repent, to turn to the Lord Jesus Christ. Many of you guys are in pain. You're struggling with suicidal thoughts. You're struggling with depression. You're struggling with many different things. And only the Lord Jesus Christ can remove that from you. In fact, when Christ Jesus was on this earth, he was casting out evil spirits that were causing pain and suffering and oppression in people's bodies. Sickness just doesn't happen. Sickness happens because we live in a fallen world. Sickness happens because sin is ruling our lives. Because the devil is running rampant. Let's walk through. Yeah, we can. So if anyone needs prayer, do you guys need prayer for anything? Your family? Prayer for anything? You guys love Jesus? Okay, amen. Praise God. So if you're struggling physically in your body, we're offering prayer. You guys love Jesus? You love Jesus? Jesus loves you. He loves you so much that he died on the cross. But I know we always talk about he died on the cross, he died on the cross. But what next? What after that? He didn't just die on the cross, y'all. He resurrected. He overcame death. He gives us an opportunity to walk the new life, to deny the old life. He gives us an opportunity to walk by faith, not by sight. We just ask and we believe and we know the truth that will make us free. That if you don't become born again of water and spirit, it means to repent to turn away from your sins. That doesn't mean just to ask for forgiveness. A lot of times we say, Lord, I ask for forgiveness. And you can ask for forgiveness, but God is saying, turn away. Don't do, don't do a 360, do a 180. Make sure that you have a transformed life where you turn away from your old life and go to the new one in Christ. And then he says for us, a part of our faith 
is demonstration, trust and obedience. He gets baptized. Baptism is not a symbol, y'all, not just a symbol. It's a spiritual reality where you die with the Lord Jesus Christ. You don't get baptized to a church. You don't get baptized to an organization. You're getting baptized to the Lord Jesus Christ in his name, in his authority. You die to the old life and you rise up a new person in Christ. And what happens is the new birth. And God, by faith, you receive his Holy Spirit. And there'll be demonstration. You'll be able to live a different way. You can't clean yourself up. Only Christ Jesus can clean you up. Only his blood can wash away your sins. And so we come into this world by our parents. But God is saying, I need you to be born from above. That's why the Lord Jesus Christ came into this world, so that we can be born again as a spiritual family, not by a natural. Let's keep it, let's keep it, what do you call, open. So now God has called us to operate. God has called us to operate with this Holy Spirit. That's what it means to be born again of water and spirit. To be born again. Jesus said that anyone that believes in Him, anyone that believes in the Lord Jesus Christ, He said, the same works that I do, you shall do in greater. So He said, anyone, Mark 16, right after Christ Jesus rose from the grave, spoke to the disciples, and right before He ascended to heaven, Right before he ascended to heaven, he said this, preach the gospel, make disciples of all men, baptizing them in his precious son's name. He said, teach them to obey all that I taught you, meaning become disciples, become followers of Christ, not just members of a religious institution. He said, become a part of the family of God and start living according to his ways and not your own. So Christ has set something for us to live for him. Any sickness in your body, Christ will heal it because the kingdom of God is at hand. Any emotional trauma, thoughts of depression, suicide, anxiety, pills can only go so far. You can pop as much pills, you can drink as much drink, smoke and all that other stuff, but it will always come to emptiness. So Christ Jesus has set something into motion where true healing and true deliverance, true freedom comes from Christ. He's the true reason for the season. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Thank you. Bless you. You love Jesus? I do. Praise God. Amen. Bless him. Bless him. He is the gift, the eternal gift for us. Salvation alone comes through the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Um, I'll say, let's walk around this way. And then if anybody wants to switch off, you guys want to switch off? Don't you have to go to work? I want to make sure you do it. The two? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. All right. No, anybody else want to, what do you call, testimonies, whatever the Holy Spirit gives, puts on your heart. Jesus is the reason for the season. It's so beautiful to come together as a family. But we don't want to lie. We need to know that it really is Christ Jesus. He's the one that sets you free. He calls us to be born again of water and spirit. Amen. And he's the only way, not only just to get healing and freedom, but some of us are struggling. We're trying to find meaning in relationships. Some of us, we date and we go back and forth. And we're constantly trying to fill that void. We're constantly, it's, it's, you were meant to be in fellowship. You're meant to be in relationship with your creator. And not amount of boyfriends or girlfriends or any other relationships can restore the first relationship that's needed. Not even your marriage can do that. Amen. The Lord Jesus Christ is the first relationship we need, period, point blank. It's the only one that can seal us on the day of redemption. And we have an opportunity to be born again, 
Not from below, from, from above. From above. God is restoring his family back. This is spiritual family. It's not about religion like that. It's always been about relationship. It's always been about relationship with your creator, with Christ Jesus. I know we think it's about Santa Claus and the Grinch and all this kind of cool stories or whatever. Kind of creepy in some cases. He's coming down in the middle of the night in your house without you knowing, but that's another thing. <laughs> Stealing all your food. Well, the Lord Jesus Christ is the real reason for Christmas. We need more of Christ. We need more of Christ in our schools. We need more of Christ in our libraries. We need more of Christ in our news. We need more of Christ every facet of our lives. But here's the thing. One day you won't have a choice. Because <laughs> when he returns, he said, every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. We've been doing this cycles and cycles of humanity. And God is setting up shop. All the time, the Lord Jesus is good. He set something into motion for us. And it is not a democracy. We don't elect King Jesus. We can't check a ballot and say, red, right, blue, whatever we think it is. <laughs> no Democrat, no Republican, none of that stuff. It's either you're for Christ or you're against Christ. You're either born again or you're not born again. And Christ has given all of us an opportunity. Regardless of what state of life we're in. But we will all be held accountable for everything we said, thought, or done before the Lord Jesus. And if this is your opportunity, you're hearing this word, you've got to put your faith in Christ Jesus. You've got to put your trust and obedience in Him. That's where it all starts. Let him reveal himself to you in a mighty way. To be honest with you, everyone's without excuse. One of the most important scriptures you'll, you'll think is John 3.16, and I'm telling you right now, is John 3.36. It said, whoever believes in the Son inher inherits eternal life. Who whoever disobeys, does not obey the Son, has wrathful condemnation coming to them. Because here's the bottom line, when grace comes in the form of Jesus Christ, we can't spit back in his face the grace that he set it before us. We can't trample on the, on the truth of the Son. So God is saying today, get born again. Don't reject my Son. Because when the Son comes back, whoever rejected him, he rejects before the Father. Whoever accepts the Lord Jesus Christ, that means trust and obey Him now, forevermore. No matter what happens in your life, whether it be sickness, pain, whatever happens, God is saying, endure to the end. Keep your faith. Not religion, keep your relationship, your trust and obedience to Christ. And now, He'll set His kingdom up. But he sets his kingdom up on the inside. The Bible says that the kingdom of God is not in persuasive speech. It's not in arguments. It's not in useless talk. But it's actually in demonstration of power. And the thing is, is that Jesus stepped on the scene and he did some things. He did some mighty miracles. But he actually did some even more mightier miracles that weren't even recorded. But one of the things that were recorded right out the gate was he started casting out evil spirits. And there are tons of evil spirits. These spirits were the byproduct of rebelliousness. And the Bible says that to not hold on to bitterness and strife for you give room to the devil. Who's the devil? The Bible says he's the spirit at work and the hearts of people. He operates. Their operation is invisible, not visible. They mess with the minds and the hearts. He said he's the God of this world. 
the prince of the air. He's able to influence the minds and the hearts of people. So you have to know Christ Jesus is the one that truly sets people free. He wants you to be filled by his Holy Spirit, not by every other spirit. Some of you guys, if you've ever seen a demon cast it out before, ever, ever seen a spirit? Has anyone ever seen a spirit cast it out of somebody before? Okay. If you haven't seen a spirit, if you haven't seen a demon cast it out, if you want to see that, come over here. I'm telling you right now, the power of God is the greatest power. Jesus said, the same works that I do. He said, anyone that believes, not just his disciples, anyone that believes, you shall do, and greater works shall they do. Because we're filled with his spirit, his Holy Spirit. We're filled with the Lord, with the Spirit of Christ. And at every command of the Lord Jesus Christ, demons must obey. They know their fate. And there's demons behind addiction. There's demons behind depression. It's not just an emotion. The Bible says that there's a spirit of fear. He didn't give us a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. So there's real warfare. And this war is spiritual. It's for the souls of humanity. What the devil wants to do is blind you guys, blind your minds from hearing the truth. Blind your hearts from receiving the Lord Jesus Christ so you can stay in your own way and your own and your own things. Remember, we have to make sure that we seek the kingdom of God first and all of his righteousness. I know we're worried about sleigh bells and Santa Claus and cookies under the tree and all that other stuff. But the true reason, the true reason for the season is Christ Jesus. The true reason is the Lord Jesus Christ. The reason for the season. He set everything into motion. Remember, he was a baby in a manger born from above. But he calls us to be born again from above. Water and spirit. Repent. Be baptized into Christ. Die to your old life. Rise in the newness of life. Know that He saves you from your sins, not for you to stay in them. That He set this thing into motion. Stand on the truth of the Holy Spirit. This is not religion. This is relationship. God is speaking to your soul. It's not the six walls of the church that saves you. It's Christ Jesus. Those buildings are going down. Christ never even said for us to build buildings. Most of the early churches actually started in homes. They started in parks. They started in the streets. He said that the harvest is ripe, meaning in the souls of humanity is here without excuse. He said, but the laborers are few. The people that really want to do that life we want the, 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 the up-and-coming preachers. We want the motivational speakers, but we don't really want servants. When Christ returns, he's going to ask. He's going to check whether or not you're a good and faithful servant or a wicked or evil, e evil servant or a lazy servant. He's going to say, what did you do with the information that I gave you? What did you go with, do with the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ? Did you reject it or did you accept it? Did you trust it and obey it or did you disobey? Because he's put this thing together for us. He tells us that we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. That we are the body. Even before Christ Jesus ascended, he said the Father promised the Holy Spirit. He said, and he's in me now, he said, and we'll be in you later. He said, but I have, I have to go so that the promise of the Father, the Holy Spirit, comes to you. And on the day of Pentecost, after Jesus resurrected and ascended into heaven, he poured out his Spirit upon all flesh. 
and the sons and daughters prophesy. 